Hello everyone, welcome back to Biofunding, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. I am delighted to introduce myself as Suman, your very own butterbutt. Here I am going to talk about peptide bond and the polymerization of amino acids. Understanding how amino acids polymerize into long polypeptide sequences is essential part of molecular biology. Why? Because polymers of amino acids units fold into aqueous medium into functional proteins. The alpha amino acids polymerize through the elimination of a water molecule. See the chemical reaction here? The resulting linkage is known as a peptide bond. For example, here you can see a peptide bond between alanine and valine. The bond is highlighted in yellow color. I hope we can easily recognize the oxygen of the carboxyl group that is shown in, as red sphere and the blue nitrogen of the amino group. Polymers composed of many amino acid residues are known as polypeptides. Proteins are molecules that consist of one or more polypeptide chains. Now, let us discuss about the peptide bond from quantum mechanics point of view. The electrons of the nitrogen atom of the amino group and the electrons of the carbon atom of the carboxyl group are found in sp2 hybridization. This sp2 hybridization turns one spherical h orbital and two dumbbell shaped p orbitals into three extended sp2 orbitals. One sp2 orbital of the C and one of the N atom overlap to create a C N sigma single bond. But the pure P orbitals are involved in sp2 hybridization that also overlap together to give rise to an effective pi bond. So you can see that a peptide bond is not really a sigma single bond. It also involves a pi bond. So, a peptide bond is actually a double bond, right? Well, not exactly. You must be thinking that, Bada Pandit, stop confusing me. You were saying that peptide bond consists of sigma bond and a pi bond? Then why it is not a double bond? Well, let me tell you why. You already know that there is a CO double bond in the carboxyl group, which again includes a sigma bond due to the overlapping of sp2 hybridized carbon and oxygen atoms. See how the p orbitals of the carbon atom overlap the p orbitals of the both the oxygen and the nitrogen atoms, forming a pi bond with each of them. So, what is the consequence of this p orbital overlap between three atoms? The consequence is this generate an electron cloud that envelops all the atoms defining the peptide bond. Here is a schematic diagram of the electron cloud overlapping the atoms defining the peptide bond. Due to this overlapping, the peptide bond gains a partial double bond character and the CO double bond partially loses its double bond nature. This amazing scenario becomes clear just if you look at the bond lengths. The CN peptide bond length is 1.32 angstrom. This is shorter than CN sigma bond length that is 1.49 angstrom and longer than CO double bond length that is 1.27 angstrom. Well, so this is all for now, guys. For further information about amino acid, please click, keep watching our videos. Please feel free to contact us in biofunding at the gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos, and asking for technical help. If you like our video, hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates and new videos, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys, see you soon.